Good morning, friends. Good morning. Well, it may not be morning when you're watching this. It is the end of April and it is time for me to do my monthly reset. It's about 7.15 right now. Everybody was up early and I haven't actually done my morning routine. The sun is shining. I'm really excited about that. I did get my plan done for the day in my daily duo. This ends at the end of June and I'm so excited to move into my new planners. I actually think, sorry about the sun, that I'm going to move into my new weekly planner today because I get an 18 month planner and the dates for October line up with October 2025, line up with May 2024. So I think I'm actually going to move into my planner early, which I've never done. I have no idea what I'm going to do for the notes pages or the goals pages or any of that stuff. I'm not sure yet. But right now I have to get everybody breakfast. I need to finish my coffee. I'm still drinking out of my Christmas mug here and um, then get started on the day. I have a lot of stuff to do. It seems early for a monthly reset because it's only the 25th but the first couple of weeks of April, we were gone. And then last week was honestly just loads and loads of laundry and getting the house back in order. So I am kind of feeling good about getting this monthly reset done and uh, getting some new things on the calendar, looking at my goals. I've actually made a little bit more progress on my goals than I expected in April. I've done some things that I did not put on my tending list that are in my quarterly action plan, so I'm feeling good about that. <sighs> but yes, breakfast first. I think I'm going to make muffins. Lucy wanted French toast, but I'm just too tired to do that this morning. Then get ready and get started on my monthly reset. Okay guys, so I have laundry going. I made breakfast for everyone. I made muffins. I've taken a shower. <laughs> It's like 9.15 right now, and I need to get my desk ready to sit down and start working on my planning a little bit. Today, my focus is really, I think, going to be on getting my family calendar done, getting my May goals done, and then potentially setting up July through December in my work planner. I've been using a Leutstrom notebook this year for my work planning, and if you saw my setup video from the beginning of the year, I think maybe I did it maybe on my yearly reset. I'm not sure. <laughs> I only wrote out calendars for January through June because it was taking me so long to draw monthly spreads. And as I've been using this planner this year, I realized that I don't necessarily need to lay out a full calendar. And so I think I might go to the way that bullet journal people set up a month in like a monthly view and that is just dating down the side and then writing what I need to write for each line potentially. I kind of have to play around with it. Maybe I need a couple of lines for each day instead of just one line but I first need to get my desk cleared off and then get going. I'm not feeling 100% this morning. Where are you going with my uh, tripod honey? Okay. So I'm going to clean up my desk and then get started, hopefully. I'm going to take a Claritin too. I don't know if I have allergies or cold. We're, we've all been a little under the weather since we got home from vacation, so that's okay though. Okay guys, so Lucy took off with my tripod, so <laughs> I only have my top-down uh, tripod at the moment to use. What I'm going to do, this is my 2024-2025 Vertical Weekly Planner. I got this beautiful peacock vegan leather cover to go on it. I'm unsure how it will be. It's one of the removable ones and it does kind of pop off kind of easily. I think just because of the material. And this is just a beast, this planner. <laughs> I got the 18 month planner plus the goal setting pages. And because of that, it is just huge. So in the past, what I've done is not really be that worried about the last six months of the year. I like to have the monthly calendars, 
for July through December of the next year, primarily because I do future planning and um, want those monthly calendars, but I don't necessarily need the weekly pages. However, this year, I am so excited about this Vertical Weekly canvas. I have not been in a canvas planner in years, years and years and years. A long time ago, they did come out with a neutral planner. I believe it had black tabs. I would have to go look in my bins and I used it as a memory keeping journal. And it was because I have three kids, there were three boxes. And so I would put a picture or something funny that my kids said each day in this. And I loved that way of memory keeping, but I haven't used a neutral planner since. I got this as my vertical for this year and I'm so excited about it. I have decided to use October, 2025 and November 2025 for May 2024 and June 2024. But I don't actually know how to change things around. So we'll have to see. The reason that I'm able to do this is because May 2024, the days line up, the first through um, the 31st, which is on Friday, first is on Wednesday. So it lines up. I do need to cover up October. We'll see how this goes. That's not straight probably. And I am going to cross out the five and put a four and we'll see how it looks. I'm not feeling too confident, but that's okay. All right, 2024. You know, I wonder if I could have used one of those month stickers, if that would have worked. I don't really wanna use these stickers, but maybe I should. This is just the monthly sticker book that they have the current one. It will be updated in the fall. Usually they come out with a new one. I don't know, September, October. I can do this. There we go. And that looks nice with the rose gold foiling. I'm using the stickers from my daily duo from this year. Now I need to come in and white out the holidays, which are not May holidays. And then that is all I'm going to do. Uh, okay, nope, just kidding. Maybe we'll use this washi. Now I know that I have monthly stickers that I got from Planner Kate, but do I know where those are at the moment? No, I do not. Let's see if I can find them. Okay, well, I have no idea where I put those monthly stickers. I don't know if I even want to do them here or not. I think what I'm going to do is just not, I'll just cover this maybe with a sticker. So instead of having the little monthly calendar up on the top, maybe I will just put a sticker over it. I feel like I'm missing some of my sticker books and it's a good possibility that I went through and got rid of a bunch of them. That's probably pretty realistic. This is a lot more challenging than I expected it to be. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not that bad. I shouldn't complain. Okay, could that have been neater? Absolutely, but I am totally okay with it. Now what I need to do is figure out what I have on my plan for May, and then I can do my family calendar. Okay, so because I have not even set up this planner, typically I will set up my planner and I will put in all of my monthly reset days, I'll put in all the birthdays and special events, vacations, days off, things that I already know. I typically do that at the end of June for July through June of the following year. I have not done that obviously because we're at the end of April and I should still be in this planner right here, but I'm not. So we will see how much I can actually get into this calendar. I need to find my birthday stickers and then we will just get all of the dates down that I already know and then I can start planning out my month. I like to actually use these little happy birthday 
stickers from, this is from the desk pad that I use as our family command center. So I'm gonna put the happy birthday stickers in and my monthly reset days. I have to look at my teacher planner to figure that out, but that is the next step. All right, this is gonna drive me insane. I think that I do need to just rip out the pages from, what months am I not going to use? July, August, maybe I'll do August, September, December, and see how that feels. Ooh, I haven't taken pages out for a long time, but do I even need this line page? I don't know. I almost thought that I ripped out the wrong page. Do I want to rip out this page too? Or do I want to have that extra line space? I'm not sure. We'll see how it looks. Keeping the line space in here. This is a little bit better. I just took out these pages. Not a ton. I wonder if I really need two line pages per month. All right, <laughs> the coil is huge, but I almost need a little bit more coiled space with all of these gold pages in the back. You know what I can do though? I could just take out these stickers because I'm not gonna use these. I don't like the colors for the neutral stickers. Although, I do like the rose gold happy birthday stickers, so I may keep those, but just not in the planner. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so let's get back to it. I think it's just going to take a little bit of time for me to get things kind of organized in here. I'm going to use one of the smaller label stickers I really like the petite planner stickers in my 7x9 life planner. Ever since they came out with a petite line, I will always use those stickers in my life planner and my 7x9 because I need something small because I write so much stuff in my planner. So having these, this is the A5 Daily Duo. I'm just going to use these stickers for my monthly reset. I'm just setting up May. We'll see how May goes, and then I will go ahead and set up June using November's calendar later on if I like using this so early. I know, it's crazy. Okay, so I am done setting up my May calendar in my new life planner. I'm excited about it. We don't have, so this month is crazy because we have like five birthdays, but we don't have a lot of other stuff going on. So that's good. We're going to, well, my older two are going to be finishing up their homeschool year. I need to do our end of year assessments for homeschooling in Maine, but everything else is pretty much pretty low key. We don't have any appointments which I think is helpful. Although I may need to make a car appointment in May, but for the time being, I don't have anything really big planned on the weekends, which is nice. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. Now I need to get my family calendar, which is in my kitchen and um, put these dates, these things onto the family calendar. It's not a whole lot, so it shouldn't take me very long. One of the things that I'm starting to explore that I want to work on during my monthly reset day is to focus on some of the home management stuff. Now, at the beginning of the year, I did write down all of the monthly tasks that I want to get done each month. These are things like cleaning the washing machine, cleaning the dishwasher, cleaning the oven, all of those types of things, giving the dog her medicine. And I wrote a list in my Passionate Penny Pincher Home Planner. There is a list in there for monthly tasks, and that's what I've used. I would like to transfer that into my Erin Condren Life Planner, so that should be fine, the monthly tasks. But I'm also hoping to spend the next couple of months before my daily duo starts to figure out the daily tasks and the weekly home management projects, how I'm going to incorporate that into the weekly overview spread that is now in the Erin Condren Daily Duo. I'm really unsure how I'm going to do that, so I am going to spend some time today trying to focus on what are the projects 
that I need to do each week and what days do I do them on. Things like, I don't necessarily do a load of laundry every single day, that's never really worked for us, so instead a few times a week I do a couple of loads of laundry, so that daily habit isn't really something that I need to focus on. But what are the other things listed in the Passionate Penny Pincher Home Planner that are things that I do need to do each week and need a reminder of. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. That is another thing that I'm going to focus on. And hopefully by the time July comes around and I start using that weekly overview or weekly recap, however you want to use it, that's what I'm going to use it for, meal planning and home management tasks. But I think that I want to have a general list of those things in my weekly life planner so that it's easy to transfer every time I get a new book for the Daily Duo because the Daily Duo is in two books, six months each. So that's where we're at. I want to go through some of those home books that are over there. I have um, the Joanna Gaines Home Body Book, the Home Edit, Complete Book of Clean, and the Complete Book of Home Organization by, it's a bowl full of lemons, I can't remember her name at the moment, and then Simply Living Well, I also want to go through. So lots of books to go through, and these are all homeschool books for next year that I'm starting to organize. So that's where, that's where we're at, family calendar, and then getting some of those home management lists done. Maybe not done. Maybe just brain dumped at the moment. <laughs> okay, so my family calendar is done. I have dinner in the crock pot. I'm making beef stew. I just changed over the laundry and folded some towels. And now I'm going to take a little break and make myself some food. And then I'm going to sit down and kind of brainstorm all of those weekly tasks, daily tasks that I was talking about in just a couple of minutes ago. I'm not entirely sure how I want to run that. I'm not entirely sure how I want to do my notes pages in my weekly life planner. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to use the goals pages that are in this planner either. Maybe I'm putting a little bit of pressure on myself at the moment to try and get fully into this planner before it actually is supposed to start in July. So that might be part of it. I think I'm going to wait on the goals pages. Uh, this is a new feature this year. If you've not seen any of my videos, they have these goal breakdown pages and trackers for you know 12 months of trackers so that you can work on your goals. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to use these, but I did want to get them because if you've watched any of my videos, you know how focused I am on goals. So I think that the next step is food, maybe a little bit more coffee, and then I can start to brainstorm both for my work planner goals for May and just kind of an understanding of all of the daily and weekly home management tasks that I need to focus on. That's where we're at. Okay, it is, what time is it? It's 12 o'clock. I made myself some food. Emma's making some avocado toast. Lucy had some lunch. I cleaned up the kitchen a little bit and I've just kind of been not doing my monthly reset stuff. But now I'm going to sit down. I, I was thinking a little bit about these goals pages in the new life planner. And one of the things this year is I took out my work goals from my power sheets this year. I'm not having work stuff in my power sheets, although I did a little bit in April because I put planner lunch in there. So I was thinking that it might actually be a good idea to use those goal pages for work-related goals. I do have a bunch of lists. I'm a list maker, you know that. That yellow Leutstrom notebook is what I use for work planning, but I haven't really set up work goals in the same way that I do my personal goals. And typically I do have work goals on my tending list and have for years. I think I started using power sheets back in 2015 and I've used that tending list monthly layout. Even when I wasn't using power sheets over the past couple of years, for my goal planning, but I haven't set anything up in that work planner for goals. I do have goals that I'm working on, but they're just not in the work planner. And I think that's because I just have a bunch of lists in there of things that, content that I want to do, ideas that I have, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm considering moving some of my goals for work into this planner, and then maybe even using the monthly dashboard page here for work goals. Now, 
that's what I used to do when I wasn't using my power sheets for my tending list. I will show you. So this is my 2023-2024 weekly planner, and this is what I used to do for my tending list when I wasn't using power sheets. I stopped using power sheets, I think, mid-2021 and started using this dashboard section for goals instead. And so maybe that's what I should do in my new life planner is put my work goals in there. So I think what I might do is just use this Late Shrimp notebook for as long as I can for all of the lists, idea lists, projects that I have for my work and move goal stuff into back into my life planner just for work things. I think that might actually work really well. We will see. I changed shirts because I was so freezing cold. That's why I have on this, this sweatshirt now. Um, I turned our pellet stove up it is 45 degrees outside right now, but it is quite cold in my house. It takes me a really long time to warm up. So yes. Um, okay. So what I have in my work planner right now is I have done all of these layouts just with pencil because I'm terrible at bullet journal layouts in pen. I always make mistakes, so I do it in pencil, but I have not been using these monthly spreads as much as I thought I would. I've been using Google Cal to kind of organize my content calendar for the past couple of years, and I do like that, but I also really like to have something on paper. So I end up making a lot of lists and it's kind of in two places, which is redundant, but it's something that I need. So what I'm instead thinking of doing for the last six months of 2024 is to just come over to these line pages and put the dates down the side for one, for one page for each month. Um, I'm not sure how many lines there are, but probably it will be enough for a full month on one page. Then I will write in the content for the month once, once I decide on it. I don't know if that will work, but that I think is what I'm going to do because just taking the time to do all of these monthly spreads, which I did, I think on my yearly reset day, it took me so long. And honestly, I just don't have time for it. That's part of the reason that I don't do bullet journaling, even though it would be easier because I would have everything exactly how I want it because of the amount of setup that just doesn't work for my schedule. So I'm going to do that setup July through December in my work planner. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is just start brainstorming with these lists from the Passionate Penny Pincher home planner. This is the physical version, obviously. They do have a digital version. I don't plan in this planner, but I like to have all of the lists that this planner has. I have a full review and walkthrough of this planner if you're interested, but what essentially what I'm going to do is just go through and write out all of the daily tasks that they have listed on this planner, as well as um, I think I'm going to print out this weekly home project schedule. So each week in the planner, there is a weekly project to get through your home. They repeat the second half of the year. And so I'm just going to kind of make some lists of those things, not in my planner, because I'm one of those people that likes to have all of the stuff nicely laid out. So I will do my rough draft um, just on a pad of paper and then I will come back and figure out how I want to put that in here. So once I have all of those lists figured out, then I think I will end up transferring a lot of that stuff into my new weekly planner, but I do kind of have to fiddle around with the layouts a little bit. It's good that I have honestly a couple of months really to get that all situated. But yeah, that is what my next focus is going to be. It's 12.15 now, my live stream starts at 2.30. I don't know what I'm going to be working on for my live stream yet. I still have to do my goals as well. I don't know if I will get to my goals before my live stream or not. You know, maybe I should do my goals now and work on my lists after that because it I have to film my goals and I can work on the list during my live stream. That's what I'm going to do instead. So I just talked all about all of the things I'm going to do and now I'm going to do something different. Yes. So I'm going to do my make goals first and then we will see 
how much time I have before my live stream starts. Okay, so I just finished my goals for May, which I'm really excited about. I will leave a link for this video in the description box if you want to see it because it will go up way before my monthly reset goes up. So I'm actually feeling really good about my goals. I was a little concerned about it because like I said in my spring refresh videos, because I did too, Typically, I will have my summer refresh at the end of May, but because I have been so busy, things have been crazy, I haven't had as much time to get things done. April was essentially cut in half because we were gone the first half of April and then just trying to get back into a routine. It was, it was really challenging, and so I didn't think that I was going to get as much done as I have gotten done. So I am feeling good about May. Granted, May doesn't start until next week, so we will see. <laughs> how things go, but I am hopeful that I will be able to get all of these things done. I'm feeling really good. It is 1.15. I have about an hour before I need to get ready for my live stream, so I am going to start brainstorming with my lists from the Passionate Penny Pincher. I'm actually going to print out the weekly projects list. When you buy the physical planner, they send you the digital planner for free. So I do have the digital planner for 2024. So I'm going to print out some lists and then start to brainstorm. And I'm just going to use one of these legal pads from Erin Condren to write my notes down and see if I can make heads or tails of things. I'm feeling good about the day. It's a little bit of a longer monthly reset today than it was last month. And I think part of that was because I was only really planning for half a month and just trying to get things ready to leave because right after my monthly reset in March, we left for a couple of weeks. How many times can I say that we've been gone <laughs> at the beginning of April? Many, many times. Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to finish my coffee, print off those lists, and then hopefully we will make some progress before my live stream. Okay, guys, I have changed shirts again. Sorry. Um, so what I've done is I printed out the weekly home project schedule, which is actually in this planner already, but I thought it would be easier for me to just have a sheet of paper. I can kind of cross things out as needed. I also printed off the spring cleaning checklist because while decluttering is my big thing, I've not done spring cleaning. Now I say that, but my mom was house sitting for us when we were away and she did clean all of my baseboards, all of the baseboard heater covers, windows, window sills, trim, banisters, walls, all of that stuff. So I don't need to do some of the deep cleaning, but there are some things that I still need to do. And I was just going to go through this list and see if there are things on here that I can include in my spring cleaning, which I did not put on my goals at all. It's just something that I'm going to have to try and fit in. It's not necessarily a goal for me to do spring cleaning. The goal is to declutter. The spring cleaning just needs to happen regardless of whether or not I want it to. It's not really... I hate, I sometimes hate having cleaning goals, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So I have these two printed off. Then the other thing that I'm going to do is just go through these daily task lists and they change a little bit from week to week. Saturday alternates like sweep garage or clean car or clean doorknobs and switches. So the Saturday tasks are kind of more like every couple of weeks. And then every other week, there's more of a deep clean on vacuuming the couch, dusting furniture, cleaning the mirrors, that kind of thing. I don't think that that's every week. Let me see. Yeah. So on Mondays, they have dust furniture and vacuum house on one week, and then clean mirrors, dust furniture, vacuum couch, vacuum house on another week. So we have to vacuum every single day. That is part of my dailies because we have a giant dog. I've talked about that in the past, but what I'm going to do now is just try and list all of these out and see which ones I need to incorporate into some sort of a weekly rhythm or routine for just daily maintenance tasks around my home, which things my kids can handle. Last year, they were doing the majority of this stuff and then we got out of that pretty much in December, January when we were having the holidays and stuff and then got back to homeschool. I did not re-implement the cleaning schedule and my chore calendar that I usually print out for the kids. So we need to get back to that, but this is the first step. So that's what I'm going to do now until my live stream, I think.
Okay, so I have written out the things that we need to do in our house. I have removed some of the things and I've adjusted some of the days. So for instance, in the Passionate Penny Pincher Home Planner, they have to make the menu plan and grocery shop on Sunday, but they don't have clean out fridge until Tuesday. And for me, that never made sense. We clean out, well, I clean out our fridge Saturday morning before my husband has to bring our trash to the dump because we live in the country. So we have to go bring our trash to the transfer station. So I clean out the fridge then. I do make my menu plan or food prep. I don't really menu plan as well. Food prep is more my thing. And grocery shop, typically on Sunday or Monday. Dusting the furniture and light fixtures slash fans. They alternate Mondays. Cleaning electronic screens Wednesday. I don't have anything for home management tasks on Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday are very busy homeschool days for us. Of course, we're going into the summer months. It's not going to be nearly as busy. So Monday is typically a Monday reset for me while I just kind of get things put back together from the weekend and really get a handle on school for the week. But so dusting furniture and the light fixtures slash fans, that's not going to add a ton of time to what I already do on Mondays. Tuesdays, I don't have anything. Wednesday is typically our passion project day. The only weekly task on Wednesday is to clean the electronic screens. So that won't take very long. Thursday is a bit of a bigger day restocking toilet paper, spend tracking, which I am doing during my live stream with my membership community. We have a co-working live stream each week, which I've talked about many, many times and you will see shortly because we're going to start the live stream soon. I had an epiphany last week when I was doing my spend tracking during our co-working live stream that I could just do that spend tracking during my live stream when we're using the Pomodoro cycles to get a project done because that is built in time that I have set aside and doing my spend tracking is something that I haven't really been super, it's not that I've not been consistent. I haven't been consistent with a specific time to do that. I kind of just do it whenever and I'm trying to get better about that. So spend tracking, uh, changing the sheets, sorting and filing paperwork are all on Thursday. Friday, wash floors, clean bathroom and mirrors, wash sheets. So that's a bigger cleaning day, but Friday is also a screen free day for us. So it's a little bit easier for me to do some of those things when my kids are just like playing outside or reading or whatnot. Saturday morning, clean out the fridge. Um, and then e uh, every other Saturday, clean the car, which I'm not good at at all. <laughs> I clean my car like a couple of times a year. Uh, and then alternate Saturdays, sweeping the garage, sweeping the front porch, which will only be when there isn't snow. Maybe I should be shoveling the front porch. <laughs> clean doorknobs and switches and clean baseboards. Those alternate Saturdays with cleaning the car. So it's cleaning the car, then sweeping the garage, then cleaning the car, then sweeping the front porch, then cleaning the car and then cleaning the doorknobs and switches. I think that's kind of how it goes uh, through this planner. So you only hit those like once every month or whatnot, all of those things, they just don't need to be done as often. And then I've added some daily habits that I need to maybe put with my dailies, taking out the trash, don't really need to write it down because I do that every day. Cleaning the stovetop, I do that every day. Washing the counters, I do that. Bring out the recycling is one that we do need to work on, but I don't have a place to put it in the garage. So right now it just stays in our entryway closet until my husband goes to the transfer station. And then sorting the mail, I also do every day that we have mail, which is you know only a couple of times a week at this point. We used to get mail every day before COVID, but now we get it a couple of times a week. And then a couple of monthly tasks that I want to add to my list are cleaning out my purse and a monthly file sort. I need to get a handle on all of the paper files. I did this a couple of years ago and then I never really continued with it. And so I need to go through everything again. I got a shredder several months ago so that I can shred things instead of having to constantly have a burn pile for my husband. Yes. Okay. So I'm feeling good about things. It's 2.05 right now. So I am going to take a little bit of time to just relax before my live stream starts.
Okay guys, so I just finished with my live stream with my membership community, which I accidentally made public. <laughs> so that was exciting to see some new faces on my live stream today. Um, I think that it was a, it was a good time. Um, I answered a few questions and it was fun. I did make it unlisted <laughs> after, after I finished. I apparently need more coffee this afternoon. It's about 3.30. I'm going to wrap up my vlog here. I worked a little bit in my work planner and I did a little bit of reading in this book that I've been reading recently. It is, I enjoy it so far. I, I'm interested to see how the rest of the book is. I'm about halfway through at the moment. Um, there are a few practical tips. A lot of it is memoir based, it seems like right now, but I am enjoying it. Uh, and it's not too difficult to read. So I've definitely highlighted a lot in here that I need to transfer into my book journal as well. But that is going to wrap it up for my monthly reset day today. I did not finish everything that I wanted to do. I still need to do spend tracking. I still need to do a few other um, home management type things. But overall, I feel really good about how things have gone today. I do feel like today has been more of a quarterly refresh. Some of the things that I do at the end of a quarter to get ready for the next quarter. And I think the reason that I feel that way is because I did not have that at the end of March, which you can kind of see if you watch my um, spring goals refresh videos. I have two videos <laughs> because I just wasn't ready to set up the quarterly goals at the end of March. And so I feel like some of the things that I should have done at the end of March are getting done now at the end of April, but I do feel really good about the progress that I've made. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have questions about anything that I talked about, or you want to come over and check out my membership community, all of the links that I talked about will be in the description box. If you have questions, definitely leave them in the comments for me. Um, yeah, but thank you guys again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.